This is Phil Nussbaum coming to you from French Valley, California. Uh, our mission this morning is to acquaint everybody with the fuel selector system that we've modified uh, to go on an F-17 staggering, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, I want to say hello to Inspector Shaper and Inspector Smith, my buddy Dick Willits at the Fort Rucker Aviation Museum, uh, Teresa Gilmore and uh, Mr. Ferentino. So all of these folks have been involved in the modification process and they deserve a shout out. Anyway, I wanted to start out by showing everyone the original fuel system. This is it. You can close in on this if you want. Um, it has uh, two valves. The upper valve contains the left upper fuel, main fuel, an off selection and a lower valve. And uh, what was a problem is that you put this in the off position when you weren't using it, and then you switch to the lower valve before you pre selected, and the engine would quit. And we would lose three or four airplanes per year due to fuel mismanagement on this original system. The other problem is that the inside of this is cork. Uh, the rotating portion of it and the cork is disintegrating. So these are no longer um, airworthy. The next setup we have in the history of the Beechcraft uh, fuel system is this Parker valve and it's five positions and off as you can see. Um, this, this valve was used in some Aerostars and the Tri-Gear Twin Beach and it's the only approved upgrade from this system. And the problem is that we're running out of these. In fact, Rebecca and I just bought the last two known to exist. This is a 1937 Staggerwing that belongs to Mr. Fiorentino. He owns um, Marana uh, Air Motive in Florida. The power plant on this particular airplane is an L6 330 horsepower Jacobs engine upgraded cylinders and an upgraded uh, uh, fuel injection system that we put on. This is a, uh, a quick drain for the rocker boxes uh, as you can, if you're familiar with radial engines, we're always trying to avoid liquid lock and this is one of the ways we do it. Uh, we also have an oil system shut off similar to the Twin Beach so that no oil gets down and past the oil pump gears when we don't want it to. The airplane's equipped with five tanks, one in each wing, and a belly tank. They're 21 gallons, 21 and a half gallons apiece. The belly tank's 29. You can see the infrared pointer. This is the solenoid, the electrically fired solenoid. And there's one up just, just like it in the other side of the wing behind Rebecca. Um, the original fuel line routing is followed all the way to the belly. And this is a maintenance valve right here. Can you see that? Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, being a mechanic, I wanted a way to isolate all these valves to work on them in case they got to be changed. And this is what we've done. We've we've zip tied them open, of course. Um, but we have one on each line so that we can isolate the entire system. Uh, this is the main tank solenoid, the fuselage tank, and this is the left upper wing, and this is the right upper wing. Same exact pattern, maintenance valves ahead of it so we can isolate them. And this is the manifold that we've created to handle the fuel from all of these solenoids. From here it makes a small curve and back down to a firewall shutoff so that in the event of a power failure all these go open. Um, and so we need some way to isolate it from the engine if we, you know, if we have to go down for some reason or uh, the mixture control doesn't work so we can use this. This is, a, this is the firewall shutoff. From here it goes out to the oil, um, excuse me, the fuel filter and then to the pumps. Um, we just started the engine waiting for the oil to come up uh, so we can operate at higher power. Uh, we're running on the main tank. Everything else is off. We're about 16 PSI, which is uh, right in the middle of the range for uh, what we're doing. So, uh, I'll be back with you as soon as the engine works up. Uh, we're going to do a magneto check right now. Just make sure we've got everything going right. 
back a little bit. Now we're going to flip all the tanks on just so that you can see that it fuel pressure is fine. It'll run with all the tanks on. system's ability to recover quickly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut the main off, let the fuel pressure bleed off, let the RPM bleed off, and somewhere between 1,000 and 500, I'll hit another fuel tank and you'll see how it recovers right away. Okay, everything is off now. There goes the fuel pressure. Starting to go. There it is. Put another tank on, it recovers right away. to burn out of the manifold. The manifold's got quite a bit of fuel in it. There she goes. I'll flip another tank on. It covers right away. And we'll do the same thing with an upper wing. There goes the fuel pressure. There goes the RPM. Almost to nothing. I mean, you can't ask for any better recovery than that. So, we'll do them all as long as we're here. Everything's off, as you can see. We'll burn the fuel out of the manifold. And it'll finally start to bleed off. There she goes. Switch back to the upper right tank. The fuel pressure recovers right away. Uh, I think the only tank we didn't do is the main, and we'll do that next. Watch well, the fuel pressure start to go down now. There it goes. Right back to where it was. So. Let's cut it off again and let's let it go down a little bit more. Come on, baby. There she goes. Watch for the RPM to drop a little bit more. Fuel pressure is down to 12 pounds, 14 pounds. There it goes. Right back again. Now, you'll notice that all of this was accomplished without the boost pump on. This is the engine driven pump only. So I'm, I, uh, I'm quite satisfied with the draw and the airplane's ability to pick itself up should a tank run dry. And of course in flight we have the help of the windmilling propeller. Uh, on the ground of course we don't. It has to pick itself up. So. Demonstration. The other thing I want to add is when we switch those tanks out on the airplane today, all the wing tanks are half empty or below, and so is the uh, fuselage tank. So um, I didn't want you to think we needed full tanks to get the to get the demonstration done. It'll pick itself up with whatever fuel is in the wings and the fuselage tank. They don't have to be full. So. Um, in conclusion, I, I hope you liked our ground demonstration. Uh, my primary purpose was to show you the location of the solenoid valves. We have a data package that explains uh, the makeup of all this stuff that we used in the modification. 
um, and the demonstration which shows the ability of the engine and fuel system to pick itself up from almost nothing uh, at the flick of a switch. So uh, I hope this was informative and we look forward to uh, receiving an experimental or R&D certificate so that we can, uh, we can do some flight testing. Thanks a lot.